Kathy Dixon here. Welcome to the Math Reflective, where we think deeply about math, how we teach math, and how we can maximize our students and our own professional potential. I have a question for you. How do we get students to own their unfinished learning and to even own their peers' unfinished learning? My school is piloting a new math resource called Open Up Resources 6-8 Math, and I love it. But sometimes I'm so focused on following the instructional routines outlined in the program and keeping up pace and trying to make sure that I'm learning every night before a new lesson that I'm forgetting some of the routines I did before. So I wanted to share something pretty cool that happened in my classroom last week, something that was unplanned. And it was one of those beautiful moments as a teacher where you leave feeling really good. I couldn't even barely teach my next class. And I had a student come up to me at the end of class, and I'm going to share that in a minute. But what was happening is we had just taken end of unit four assessment. And I teach sixth grade advanced math as well as standard math. So this was my advanced math class. Students um, had the objective that day is I will be able to analyze errors and find resources to support my unfinished learning. So my objective really was to have them focus on their own unfinished learning. But what was so cool and what came out of that is I had students start to own their peers' unfinished learning as well. And here's how it happened. After about 20 minutes or so, students working on their errors and analyzing their errors, I started running or walking around the room trying to help them. And I had many hands raised, and I was feeling I wasn't able to give the one-to-one -one feedback that I really wanted to give so students could bridge that gap to what they, they were struggling with. And then I just kind of remembered, wow, well, I can have their peers help them. So I asked for any of the students who were finished if they wanted to then be a peer assistant. What was so great about that is there were some students in the class that were really strong students, but they're not necessarily the ones that raise their hand a lot in front of the whole group. They don't necessarily stand up to be my student leader for the day, but they were you know, raising their hands quickly because they wanted this opportunity to work quietly and one-on-one -on -one with the student. And then what started to come to me is, wow, I still can't get to everybody. And I'm also seeing that some of these kids have the same questions about the same problem. So as I finished talking one-on-one -on -one to a student and saw that they did master that problem, I said, who else didn't get problem number six? Let me see, show of hands. Students raised their hands. And then I said to that child, all right, go run a math clinic. So I sent them to the board, the dry erase board, and I said, everyone go sit up there. And then that child led that problem and talked them through their own understanding. It was just one of those great days in class, and I told them afterwards how proud I was of them. But I didn't expect what was going to happen on the way out of class. I have a very studious student named Megan. And she came up to me at the end of class, and her eyes were all lit up, and her face was smiling. And I just have to share with you what she said to me. It was a really, really neat experience for me to be able to help him and find what was, like what learning helped him the best and his way of learning. So I went up to him and he had been struggling with this one problem and I could tell he, he was getting really frustrated. And so I went up to him and I said, hey, you know, what do you need help with? And he said, this problem here, it's, it's not making any sense to me. So I had to try and figure out what was his way of learning. How did he like to figure out problems? How did you figure out his way of learning? I looked at the way he had written down the question and tried to see where did he mess up and what did he have right. So once I found that out, I tried to lead him onto like what was next. And he still wasn't getting it. We weren't getting the right answer. So I said, let's try something new. Let's try my way of learning and see if that's how he likes to learn too. So I said, let's try some equations. And for a lot of students, equations can be really confusing because you don't know what numbers to put where. Um, but it was something that really clicked for me when uh, Ms. Dixon told us about it. So I was like, okay, let's try this. So I said, we're going to use x in this equation. And what does x represent? And he told me that it was the unknown value. And I said, yes, that's exactly what it represents. And it made me so elated to know that he was understanding how I understood. And it made me so happy to know that he was finally getting the problem. And it may have been just one equation that we were able to figure out. But I was so proud of him for figuring it out. I feel like the greatest success of that lesson in that class period was not only that my students were owning their own unfinished learning, 
but that students like Megan and other peer assistants in that classroom that day were owning their peers on finished learning as well. And that's kind of what this program, this resource, this way of teaching has done for my classroom culture, and I love it. My teaching certainly has shifted from, here's how to do it, do it my way, to, wow, I didn't even think of that. Can you explain that to me? Or can you show me another way to do it? And I see that Megan experienced that same thing as she was working with students. I love that we are truly building our understanding together and constructing that knowledge. I would love to hear more how other teachers um, implement peer assist programs in their classrooms or outside of their classrooms. How do you get students to help own their peers' unfinished learning? I'd also love to know how the sharing of many different strategies has transformed you as a mathematician and your classroom. If you're interested in joining this journey with me, please subscribe to my channel, The Math Reflective, and put comments in the comments section and let me know. Give me some feedback on how you're doing. Until next time, are you ready for more?